gaps and she does a really really good job she's been featured on cnbc i really enjoy having melissa on and that's why i bring her on so often so melissa let's go ahead and get you in here how are you doing today good afternoon can you hear me i can yeah oh, good let me go ahead and make you the presenter how are you doing this afternoon terrific let me see if you can See my slide? Can you see it? Yep, I can see you and I can hear you. Let me turn off my camera and uh, it's all you. Great, thanks so much for having me, Jeff. Welcome everyone. Beautiful day here in Manhattan. And I'm happy to be here today to talk to everybody about what I do, which is train the stock market. So let's get going here. I'm here to talk to you today about gaps, like Jeff said, but particularly I'm here to talk to you about trading for a living. So, you know, when I started trading, the reason that I started trading is I wanted a new career. I was doing mortgages and at the time it was 2007, 2008, and the mortgage industry had started collapsing right under my feet and I did mortgages for 17 years and the industry changed. And, you know, I was at a point where I really wanted to do something where I could make a lot of money. And lo and behold, I found out about the stock market. The interesting thing, though, about trading is you actually have to learn how to train before you can make money in the market. It's not like you just go and you start a job Monday morning at 8 a.m. and all of a sudden you're making money. It's a skill. It's a skill set. So actually getting good at trading, actually making money trading means that you need a certain skill set. And more importantly, you actually need a strategy that consistently works in the market to be successful. So if you have any questions, you can plop them in the room. I'll see them as we go along here. You can also email me at melissathestockswitch.com. You can call me at 929-3200-GAP. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and Skype. As Jeff said, I appear on national television. And I also have been putting YouTube videos, actually. I live in, in New York along Central Park. I've been putting some park videos. I took a walk in the park today. I've been putting some nature videos on. So my YouTube is quite interesting. It's about the stock market. It's about TV clips. I have... Uh, nature videos, so um, I try to make it fun. And I also try to put on Twitter whenever I'm on TV as well. Here I was talking with Neil Cavuto about the economy. You know, the economy has been up, down, up, down, up, down. We saw the market have a rally on Friday into the holiday week because we had some data out. And again, it's gonna be a very interesting next six months. Why? Because the market started off pretty bullish this year. We've been rallying, we're up for the year so far, the QQQ is in the spy, but the question is, will it last? Will it last? So coming into this coming week, July 14th, which is this coming Friday, is the beginning of earnings season. Earnings season is important because it's the best time to make money trading in the stock market. So I think where the market goes uh, for, the, the, for the remaining part of the summer and into the fall, is really going to depend on how earnings turn out, particularly the banks and the financials, which have had a rough start to the year. As we all know, some banks went under, under this year. And of course, the banks have been rocked by interest rate, rates continuing to go up. So I think we're going to know a lot more really in the next 10 days once we see how some of these large banks report their earnings getting into the beginning of this earning season. So why are you here? If you're here today to listen to me, it's probably because you want to be successful. You want to be successful as a trader, or maybe you're losing money trading, or maybe you're making money, but you're not making enough money, or maybe you're new. Maybe you've never traded at all, and you don't know where to start, or you need a trading strategy. You're, you know, you're, you're trading, but you just don't have a set thing to do every single solitary day that works consistently. So that's what we're going to talk about here today and again if you're going to be successful you have to have a successful strategy and particularly if you want to do this for a living and whether it's part-time money or full-time money the whole idea about trading is the stock market is only open from 9 30 to 4 and it's closed weekends which is how i'm able to be with you here today you know when i had my mortgage job i worked seven days a week seven days a week in fact i think the the end of the line for me was i had a customer call me actually on Christmas Day. Christmas Day I was with my family and I said, that's it. I've got to find a new career. So I think everybody gets to that point where they realize they want to make a big change in their life, a career change in their life. And you know, we've seen that more and more even with the work at home scenarios that many careers are having now and really since COVID. But even if you like your career and you like your job, you can still make money on the side trading 
and it's part-time hours. You know, I trade the morning. So I'm taking trades at 9.30 in the morning, right into the open, and the first half hour of the day. And you can make a couple hundred dollars a day trading, and you don't even have to sit there for six and a half hours. But my system that I trade, like I was saying earlier, is based on gaps. And you have to have a successful strategy in order to trade the market. And again, a lot of people want to buy dips. And while that can work in a bullish market, when things turn, it doesn't work. And you can't buy every dip, dip and make money, even in a bullish market, even in a bullish stock. You saw that actually in NVIDIA. NVIDIA is a very, very strong stock, probably one of the strongest stocks in the market right now. And if you bought every pullback in that, you were not successful, okay? But that is something that I've been watching particularly going into earnings season as well. So I put uh, the main results here in the room for an average risk of $2,800 per trade. If you're in my live room in May, and I have June's next, with this type of risk, trading equities. Now, for those of you who don't know what equity trading is, it's when you take a trade on margin. So you have to have a margin account in order to day trade. So I run a live room every day, Monday through Friday, and I call the trades live. I call the entry, the stop, and the exit in the room. If you had risk $2,800 per trade for the month of May, you would have made $59,912 with me. And in the month of June, we had a good month in June too, you would have made 57,752. Now I took off this past week for July 4th. I'm back on Monday, but overall, the last two months have been very solid. Now, those of you that don't know me, I focus on shorting. I will go long, we did actually go long Navinia, but I'm mostly short. And you may say, well, wait a minute, Melissa, if the market's bullish, why are you shorting? because short moves happen as a result of panic and panic comes in fast and you can make a lot of money shorting if you know how and what to short and when. So I like the fast trades, particularly because I wanna get in and out quickly and then I don't have to worry about economic data or any Fed reports or anything else that happens to come out that could mess up your trade. So anyways, to get these kinds of results, okay, these good solid results, what do you need? You need a consistent strategy that works under any market condition, bullish, bearish, sideways, whatever. You need a way to make the daily picks. You need a way to enter and exit the trades and you need good money management. So, I mean, again, I say this and it sounds very simplistic, but there are a lot of people that are trading that don't have a set strategy and they also don't have good money management. What do I mean? They don't get out when they're up or they risk too much you should be risking the same amount of money in every single trade that you take. So if you're risking $1,000 a trade, it's got to be close to that in every trade. Otherwise, you can't compare apples to apples because you could have five winners where you're not risking the same amount, where you're risking less, and you get a one loser that could blow out the five winners. So you've got to have a consistent amount that you risk on every single trade in order to see consistent results too. So for me, like I said, I focus every single day on gaps. So for those of you that don't know what a gap is, a gap is the difference between the close and the open. Simple, but can you trade every gap that happens in the market? No, now a lot of people do gap fills. I don't do gap fills. I'm actually looking to take the gap in the direction of the gap. So if I see a bullish gap up, I'm looking to go long if it rates for my system. If I see a bearish gap down, I'm looking to short based on my system. You can't go long every gap up and you can't also short every gap up and vice versa. Now, most stocks gap on any every single day and also the market. So like when I say the market, I mean the QQQs, the diamonds, which is the DIA ETF of the Dow or the SPY, SPY, which is the ETF for the S&P. So I will train the overall market sometimes. And nowadays you can actually take daily options in the market. They have daily option expirations. That's not something I'm doing. I'm doing the weekly options when I trade them, but you can. You can, you could actually day trade the market ETFs as options now and get in and get out quickly. Um, someone is asking about capital. No, these trades here, the results that I just showed you were in the live room, they were trades on margin. You do not trade options on margin. Options trades, you have to have the cash, whatever you pay for the cash. We will talk about options in a little bit here. But on, on a margin trade, you have to have a margin account, which means at a retail broker, you need more than 25,000. You can open up an account at a prop broker. Most places require a minimum of 5,000 and you can get 10 to one margin. At a retail place, you need four to one margin. Options trades are based on cash. Whatever you risk per the amount of risk is what you, is what you have at risk. So it's, it has nothing to do with necessarily, um, well, I shouldn't say that because sometimes usually the cost of the stock 
as far as price per share equates with the option. But then again, I say this, and then I'm looking at the SPY options and some of the QQQs options, and I think they're very reasonably priced. But typically, if you have an expensive stock, something like NVIDIA, you might have an expensive option. But it's still cheaper to trade options than it is uh, more so than to do margin trades, okay? So I do do options too, but the live room is equity trades, where I'm calling the equity trades. The options trades are newsletter trades, and we are gonna go over some of them as well. In fact, I'm gonna go over the last week of options trades that I called on the newsletter. But that is a subscription service, that is not the live room. Um, did, I, did I answer that question? I think so. Okay, so let's get back to talking about gaps. Again, you do not need a general overall broad-based view to make money in the market. You can read all the books in the world. It's not going to help you make money, okay? And tons of people have a lot of information about the market, and they fail, okay? Because they don't focus on one thing. For me, it is all about the focus on one thing, and even one trade per day. And I'm looking for institutional money in the price patterns and gaps. So what do you need? You have to have charts. You have to have charts, you have to have live data, you have to have pre-market data and post-market data, and you have to be able to see the gap, okay? Because again, you can have as much knowledge as you want, but if it's a general overall broad-based view of knowledge, it's not really going to help you make money. It's pinpointing the right thing to do. And if you find it and you get it, the timing right, and this is for day trades or options, you need to get the timing right, before the big move comes in, then you can make money. So anyways, what is a gap? Let's take a look at it. This was the biggest trade of the week. It was Nike. This I did a put in, okay? And we'll talk about the options call in this later. Uh, but let's just go over what is a gap, okay? So Nike closed here, gap down. So a gap is the difference between the close and the open. So the stock closed here at, at th this particular day, okay? It was the 29th. And then it opened at 9.30, US stock market opens at 9.30 of the next day at a different price. So it opened lower. Okay, so in this case here, it was a gap down. And then it fell. Now, I'm just gonna go back in here, I did not play this, but this was a gap up, okay? Stock closed here, gapped up. So it closed at one price at four o'clock and opened at a different price at 9.30 and rallied, okay? So actually, you could have gone on this. I didn't on this particular day, but you could have. This, we bought puts in, and it fell. And you could have day traded this too. You could have shorted this as a day trade, and you could have done this as a swing trade, okay? So this is a gap. This is a gap down. This is a gap up, okay? And actually, you could have played those both. Here's another example of a gap. This was Baidu. We did this too. Stock close here, gap down, fell. So again, Baidu closed at one price at four and opened at 9.30 lower at a lower price point. This is a daily chart, okay? So you could have shorted this. You could have shorted as a day train and you could have bought a put. Mm. Got in, got out. So it fell, the stock price fell on that particular day. Anyways, the number one key ingredient to becoming successful as a trader is having a specific system and strategy that can offer you reliable and consistent profits on a regular basis. Trading success and financial success in the market is by pure design. It is not by accident. What does it take to be successful? It takes having a niche. So for me, my niche is gaps. And it's actually the fast trains and shorting, okay? So those are the things that I specifically have a niche in. That I'm trading on the, on the day trades, on the stats that I showed you earlier, the trades I do in the room, I'm trading on the one minute chart, on the one minute chart. So I am in and out on the one minute chart. Most day traders are not trading the one minute chart. They're waiting till after 10 o'clock to see what the market's doing or the stock to take a trade. I'm usually in and out in five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, very, very quickly, okay? Again, let's go over what a gap is. A stock gap to the closing price is different than the opening price. Very simple. So gaps happen every day in the market. Are all gaps playable or what I call predictable? No. You need a correct way to find the best gap and you have to know what direction to play it. So that is what is the crux, you know, what, of what I figure out in the morning and I'm figuring all of this out in the pre-market. 
So I know what I want to do. I know what I want to do. Nike or Mew or whatever I want to trade way before the stock market even opens because I get up in the morning and I rate the gap using a checklist. If you come and take my class, I teach a class once a month on my method. This is what you will learn from me. You will learn how I make the picks. Okay. So I go through it early whenever I get up 6 a.m. 7 a.m. in the morning. And again, sometimes I see late gappers, but I usually know way ahead of time what I want to trade in the morning. So there are some people that are trading options with me. They do not come in the day trading room, but they're trading options with me. They get the trades for the options newsletter to their email. They have a full-time job. They're not in the room. And when they get the trade, they put the trade on and they let it ride out and they put a sell order as soon as they buy it. I'm just buying puts and selling them and I'm buying calls and selling them. I'm not doing complicated option strategies. My option strategies is based on my gap strategy. It's based on trading momentum. It's based on trading momentum to the upside, in which case I would go long or buy a call, or it's based on trading to the downside, in which case I would buy a put like in Nike where the stock price is falling, okay? So if you want to trade on this side, which I suggest for people until they decide this is something they really want to do full time, you can do that. But I suggest doing it in reference to focusing on options if you're doing something where you can't be in the live room every day. But success or failure, if you're trading, has everything to do with the quality of your system. And I'm ever amazed whenever I do lectures or webinars or whenever people email me or they ask me questions or they call me on the phone and I have a conversation with someone and I get to know people. I'm surprised how many people risk money in the market and they don't have a system at all. They just, they don't even have a system at all. They say something to me, which is, which when they describe it to me is an entry. It's not a strategy or a system. So there's a difference. So I have a system that allows me to make the pick. Then I have a way I enter that pick. There's a difference, okay? I can't take an entry, even the way that I take them in every single thing that trades. It has to be a good gap or what I call a golden gap that rates per my system, okay? Because you can't short everything and you can't go long everything. And again, even if you get it right with the market, and again, who's to say what the market does for the next six months? A lot of people are very, 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 very bullish right now. While the market could continue and it's getting close to the highs and we could go over the highs and rally, that may not happen. And if it does not, a lot of people are going to get pummeled that keep buying dips because the next buy the dipper may fail in the market. So anyways, what I'm looking for is the reigning system to tell me what to do, where and when. And so that's what I figure out. All the work is done in the morning. So I make it easy for myself. If I find something that rates good, then I watch it on the open and then I do it. If I don't, then I don't do anything that day, okay? So let's take a look at Baidu. Again, we were looking at this here. This is the daily chart. So again, Baidu closed here, gap down, fell. This was June 29th. I actually forget the reason for this gap. I don't remember now, it was like two weeks ago. But anyways, it fell and it rated good. So we did a short in this. We did a day trade in this. This was a trade on margin. You would need a margin account to take this trade if you wanted to do it. And again, I call this trade live in the morning. The entry was 136.55. This is an advanced trader risk. What do I mean? It's anything over $1,000, $1,500 I consider advanced trader. The risk here with this is 28.50. This is my average risk. I did an add in this. Actually, it was close to the price. I doubled up on size. This is a this is a sophisticated technique, but I do this and I call it in the room if you want to do it, where I see a second setup where I know it's gonna go. So I added and then it did. It dropped. And we got we got like a dollar fifty out of it. So it actually kept going though. So this was a good trade. Again, a dollar or more is a good trade, even in something like Baidu, over hundred dollars price per square. I mean a price per share. 136.56. Exit was $135.05, profit was $9,060. Now getting back to margin. So if you wanted to take, the, say for example, 1,000 shares, just to make it easy, if the stock price was you know, $136.05, you would have needed how much buying power? You would have needed $136,500 in buying power. Does that mean you would have needed $136,500 in cash? No. If you had a, a prop account, you would have needed 10 to 1, so like 13,650. If you have a margin account where you need 4 to 1, you would have needed like a little over 34,000. So again, the cost of something is not the same as the cash you need to take a trade. And if you don't have a margin account or you have a retirement account and you can't do day trades, then guess what? You can buy a put. Again, I do do puts too. 
I do puts and I buy calls, but I'm just showing her to, here an example that I called in the room that you could have not done this if you didn't want to, you could have bought a put, or you could have done both, or you could have done this, okay? So anyways, here was the call. So we were talking about the one minute chart, stock close here, gap down, dropped, rallied, boom. We shorted it, added, got the drop, out, done. Kept going. You can see down here where it actually, and I think it actually yeah, went to 133 and change. So I had, I had what I thought was a good exit in this at 135 or something, it was up a lot, but it actually ended up coming all the way down and ran down another dollar plus. So again, this is a fast trade. Time of the day in the open is 9.30, and you see the trade fell off a planet in the first 30 minutes of the day. So again, you do not have to sit all day and watch and wait for setups, and you do not have to wait to make money. What I was saying about institutional money and getting momentum move, this is what I'm talking about. Boom, that's it. Doom, out, done. I call it chunking it out. This makes day trading so much easier if you can figure it out and find this to play it in and out very, very quickly. Because otherwise, you are scalping if you're not getting a move like that to be able to make this type of profits. Any questions here about this or Baidu? So getting back to institutional money, Gaps are created with large institutional money. That's what makes the gap. What do I mean by institutional money? I mean large hedge funds, banks, big professional traders with size, volume. Everything, everything we do is with volume. Every stock that we trade, every one we're talking about in here today is a stock you're familiar with or a company that you know or you may even know the products that they sell or buy them yourself as a consumer. The professional gaps that happen and play out in stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correct direction to play the gap and then confirm that the large money will flow with it. And so that's what I'm looking at doing in the morning. So the 26 point rating system pinpoints the direction of the footprints of institutional money in gaps. And that is what you would come and learn from me. That is what I teach in the class. OK, how to know that Baidu would fall before the stock market even opens. How to know to short it on the one minute chart, okay? So gaps are an event. They create a sense of urgency, specifically shorting. And that's why I love to short. It's very, very quick, it's panic. That's an action is being forced by participants in the stock. This is why gap trading is incredibly powerful. Trading gold in gaps is a powerful and profitable way to trade because we're trading on the side of power of money. By having a formula to rate and qualify the gap, you get confirmation and conviction that the large institutional money is on your side and then you play it. And so that's it. That's how it all comes down. And so you're looking for that in the morning. So what we learn from me, a way to pick the best gap to play each day. You only need one trade a day to make money. You can trade gaps as day trades are using options. And also you need a way to enter it and you need a way to exit it. So again, just going willy nilly and saying, oh, the market's rallying today, I'm gonna to go long this. You can't do that with everything. You've gotta hone it down what you wanna do. Get in as early as you can before the big move happens, otherwise it's too late and you're chasing it and then you're missing the move. And again, or you're taking too much risk, okay? So you want the volume, you want the early entry. The entry is the confirmation. The rating system tells you what's going to go and where is it's going to work so we're going to go over this was the trades for this week now i'm i'm showing here beginner trader results i risk more than a thousand dollars per trade but i'm doing this because this is a good amount that anybody that's trading could risk you can risk less if you want but i'm using an average of a thousand dollars per trade. this was the trades from that expired on friday these were options trades for this week there were six trades one loser zero break evens and five winners so the win ratio for the past week in the options newsletter the options that we did was 83 percent so if you risk $1,000 in every trade on average, we're going to go over them here, you could have made $9,215 this past week on the trades called in the options newsletter. Average return on investment was 152%. That includes the one loser. So this is an average week. There are some weeks that I do more than six options trades, some that I do 10 or 15. It depends how busy we are. But this was a particularly, you know, average week to show six. Again, there's five days in a week. I don't necessarily do a trade every day on the options newsletter. I may have one day I do nothing. Then I may have another day where I do three trades. 
With the day trades, I am trying to get one trade a day when I'm in the live room, when I'm trading, um, when I'm in and out in the morning. And again, the difference between doing day trades and options is purely something that you can decide yourself. Personally, I like doing both. One of the reasons I like doing options is because it can hold for an overnight move. I'm not doing that with my day trades. If the day trade doesn't go when I'm in it before four o'clock, I'm not holding it overnight as a swing trade. It would not be on margin, it would be on, or it would be two to one margin or in cash. I'll get out, I'll kill it, I'll kill it with a loss. But I focus on day trade in the morning quick. So I like to do both. Again, I like the fast moves for the day trades and I like to be able to hold overnight or get a larger move in an option, okay? And also options are easier to hold through wiggles and jiggles versus a day trade, all right? So let's look at the first one we did here. We did the Tesla 240 puts, okay? We shorted this. So again, the expiration date was Friday, 7-7. I called this Monday in the morning on the 26th before the open. Okay, so you would have bought the put Tesla. If you were in the newsletter, you would have gotten this to your email. You don't do the trade until the market opens. Cost was 552 contracts. Again, this is an average risk of $1,000. Risk was 1100, sold at 10. Profit was $900. Return on investment, 82%, 82%. So again, this was a solid trade. And let's take a look at the chart. In this case here, this is again, Tesla. What did it do? Stock closed here. This was on a Friday, gap down on a Monday, or no, I think that was, was that Tuesday? No, yeah, that was Monday. Uh, gap down, rallied, dropped. So again, this fell, so we did a put because the price dropped. It was a gap down, fell. Take it over, see how it went. So again, I, I grabbed it, to get it into the strike. Sometimes when I call it at, I sometimes I'll call them at the money, sometimes I'll call them away from the money, to, and then the target is basically the strike. Now, CVS was another one that we did. This was a loser. This didn't go right this past week. I don't know why. There was something that wasn't right about the cost of it, actually, I realized after I did it, but it was a good gap. 9.09 in the morning on the Tuesday, I sent this out, the 68 CVS puts. It was a bust. It cost 90 cents. I thought that was strange. I felt like it should have cost more. Anyways, I sold out of it on Thursday, saved a little bit, but it was basically a bust. It never went right. So let's take a look at the chart, what happened on this one. This just didn't go. Stock close here, gap down. This is something that normally will have a big move. You can see some of the red bars over here. And even the green bar is a big move here. This just kind of went sideways the whole week. So the second day, I thought it was going to go, and then, and then it didn't. So this just never went really profitable for me. So CVS was the loser the loser that week, this past week. Baidu then we did the 135 strikes. I sent this out on Thursday the 29th, again, before the open, so you can get ready and you know what to watch and you know what to do. And again, this is an options trade. We did the puts, cost was 225, which was very reasonable. Five contracts was a risk of 1125, sold at 380, profit $775, return on investment 69%. So anyways, this goes in here, stock close here, gap down, dropped, okay? So anyways, this in here was a short. You could have day traded it. You could have bought the put in it and made money. And again, I get fell into the strike and down. So again, momentum What's the momentum that's happening or, or, or happened on the 29th and the buy deal? It's sold off. It's sold off in the gap, okay? Actually, you could have done this over here too, but I was off this past week, so I didn't do anything with that. The big winner for the week, though, that we did this past week, the biggest one that we've had in a while was Nike. We did the 109 puts in Nike that expired on Friday. You could have been in this to the last day. I was not, but you could have, and it's crazy to say that, but you could have. So on Friday the 30th, I saw this at 6.41 in the morning. Again, with my system, you can get up as early as you want. You can do it the night before if there's gaps the night before, which sometimes there is, and particularly in earnings season, there actually is gaps at night. You could have rate the gap, rate the gap at night, rate the gap when you get up in the morning, and then you know what you're doing. Like, I knew this was going to work three hours before the open, okay? So I sent the trade out to the list. Again, you can't do it to the open. This was the 109 puts in night game. Part of the reason it was a good trade was the price was cheap um, and it fell, just fell straight down like a brick. 
So the cost was 75 cents, 15 contracts, again, an average risk of 1,000, 11.25, sold at 475. Profit was $6,000. Return on investment, 533%. And so the reality is that, will you have a trade go to a piggy target like this all the time? No, but you will have some trades go to piggy targets like this. You will have some trades where you can risk $1,000 and make six grand in this. This was an earnings trade. So it was a good trade. It was an earnings trade and we're getting into earnings season. We will have other trades like this. Again, this gap rated extremely good. It was one of the trades where I call it, you can't screw this up. You can't screw this up. So this closed here, gap down and just fell off the planet. And here, here it was. It actually was like at 104 on Friday, the last day. Again, I was out of it here. But you could have been in it the last day and still made money. It was crazy. Absolutely, absolutely crazy. So a beautiful, what? Sell-off. Again, panic sell-off, but this was a very good gap. So you should not hold every single trade to a monster target. But there will be some gaps that rate extremely well that will continue down. And you don't have to rush to get out of them. And again, the benefit of doing options is that you can capture overnight moves to get this type of a move. Okay. Any questions here so far? As I'm going through this. Then we did do one call. Again, we, these were mostly puts this week. We did the 425 NVIDIA calls. This actually rallied on Friday. I did not see what this is worth. I don't know if you could have got out of this with money Friday, but I got out of it before Friday. But I called this on Friday, 630 at 10 in the morning. Cost was $6. Two contracts, the risk was 1200 Sold at 950 The profit was $700. Return on investment was 58%. So, we have a ton of questions, Melissa, if you oh, want some. Sure, go ahead. Oh, sure. Okay, let's see. Um, uh, Jim wanted to know if you're doing option trades. I think uh, I think you've answered that one a little bit. <laughs> oh, yeah. He also was hoping you could talk more about your trade room, like how much it costs and how it works, The trading, um, et cetera. Yeah, go ahead. The live trading room is open at 9 a.m. in the morning. If you wanna join the trading room, you must take my class. So the class itself is a prerequisite to join the room. After you take the class, the room is $500 a month, but you have to take the class first. I am running a July 4 special still, which is going on through tomorrow, which includes the trading room free with the class for the month of July. Normally it's $500 a month after the class. The options newsletter, there's no prerequisites. You can sign up, that's a subscription service. You do not have to take the class to get the options trades. Uh, volume on, or Herbert, <laughs> Herbert wants to know, how does volume play into your gaps? It doesn't play any, any point in my decision making, if that's what you mean. It plays a point in where I'm not doing something if it doesn't have volume. So it's really just simple. I'm not trading penny stocks. I'm not doing any options that don't have any volume. I just flat out will not trade anything that doesn't have enough volume because it's not going to move. It's not being played with institutional money if it doesn't have any volume, and therefore I'm not going to get a big move in it. What percentage of gaps reverse uh, from William? I don't play the reversals, so I don't know what percentage reverses. I'm not looking for that. I'm not looking for them to reverse. I, my rating system is looking to rate it based on whether or not it's going to continue the gap that is being set in the direction of that gap. So I have absolutely no idea what percentage reverse because I'm not playing those because to me that's going against institutional money and I don't want to do that. I make more money playing with the gap. Again, you can't play every gap down. Going back here to Nike, you can't play every gap down short just like you can't play every gap up long. I'm qualifying that. That's the genius in the system. But I don't know how many or what percentage reverse because I'm not doing those. Uh, Tammy wants to know if you have a recommended time frame for looking at charts, like daily, weekly, etc. As soon as, weekly, a, as, soon as uh, you mean, t you mean, uh, you if you mean the daily chart, the one minute, or what time of the day in the morning? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think she yeah. was asking about time frame, like, uh, like is I do like a daily, sixty daily, minute, yeah. thirty minute. Yeah, the daily, all the daily charts in here that I have in here, which you can get from Jeff. Cool. And then uh, last question, and you can get back to it. Uh, oh, actually, there's two. Do you look at volume weighted average price from William? No. And do you are you looking for a significant gap? And can you quantify that? No. Okay. <laughs> all right. Cool. Like, I, mean, I mean, here I don't. Because I mean, I can, I can try to go back and see if like I mean these are all kind of little different ones here. Um, I'm trying to see if there's any. These these all look actually kind of the same this week. But but there's I'll do if you mean big or small or medium. 
I do them all. If that's if that, I, there's no yeah uh, yeah. I gotcha. That's cool. You're all caught up. You can uh, okay. You can proceed. <laughs> okay. So, anyways, Nike was a good one. Everybody made money with this. Again, if you wanted to take one contract, you could have done that. Again, you can take more risk than a thousand dollars. I'm just showing you with an average of a thousand what you could have made with this. So the Navinia one I did and I got out of this. I think 50% is good in an option, but in, I, was, I was aware of the holiday. What happened with the Navinia was I did it here. Originally I did it on the 30th and I wanted it to pop that day. It went, but it didn't go really the way that I wanted it to go. It was up this day, but it didn't go big. Then we had the holiday. And then I had this move up here. This was green at the high end here, and I got out. So I got out of the NVIDIA here on this day, which was after the July 4th. Again, this was a call. I don't know exactly how this ended up closing on Friday or where this closed on Friday, but this was above 425 on Friday again. But I'm typically not holding something that I can get out of with profit before the last day because I think it's just too risky. It's just too risky to do that. The other big trade we had was Mew. So I actually even did this late. I did the 63 Mew puts that expired on Friday. This is another one you could have been in it to the last day and still made money in it. But I actually did this trade late. I saw it late and that's why I did it late. I said, this is still gonna drop, so let's just do it. And then I did, it was Friday around lunch. But anyways, you could have gotten a much cheaper, we could have paid half of this if you'd done it in the morning on that particular day, but it still worked. 12 contracts, risk was 1080, sold at 240. This was getting out on Thursday. This still fell the Friday too. Profit was 1800, which was 167% return on investment. Now, again, new, I did here, but actually I did it, like I said, around lunch. So that's unusual for me. I'm just saying I didn't see it till then, but I knew it was still gonna fall. And then it did, do, 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 and it fell down. Actually, this did fall Friday, there it is. So again, this was, you know, $2 plus through the strike on Friday, but I think you got to get out of trades if you're up on them the Thursday before the expiration, and I'm usually doing the weeklies. So I'll usually do something out with a Friday expiration, unless it's a holiday or a short week, then I will do it out for two weeks. But it doesn't mean I'm holding the trade, like I said, until the day of expiration. The whole point of trading, whether you're doing a day trade or an option or whatever you're doing, is to get the momentum and get out. Get the momentum and get out. On the one minute chart when I'm doing a day trade, I get the move in a one minute, boom, and I'm out. On an, in an option, I may get the move in a, if I do a put in a fat red bar and then I exit. Or if I don't get a fat red, okay, then I am looking for a gap down, a consecutive gap down the following day or another day of the week that I'm in the trade. Because again, that's how you can get trades to be very profitable if you happen to be in them overnight and then it gaps in your direction. For example, say I'm just making this up, this didn't happen, but say you did on this particular day on Friday, say you had done the 63 puts and you, say you had to get up Monday morning. Again, this did not happen. I'm just making this up to show an example because this does happen with some of the trades that it takes. If you had gotten up Monday and, and it would have opened and gapped down at 60, well, you would have been up poof, as soon as you woke up. You would have been up a lot. And what would you have done? You just get out. That's it, done. So that is one of the reasons why I also like doing options because you can make a lot of money by capturing that overnight move by already being in the train, but you have to know what to look at to be in it, okay? So anyways, getting back to what we were talking about here about trading and everything you have to do to get to this point. You know, I, I, I come across this, I've been teaching now people, you know, for a long time, 11 years I've had the stock switch business, I've been trading for 15, you know, I've, I've talked to people from all walks of life and all, all over the place, all over the world. Very few people come to me that have never traded before. I think I've had like maybe less than five clients that have come to me in the time that I've taught people that have never traded. But most people have traded. And again, most people trade, they don't really get anywhere with it. And then as life goes on and they're trading and the years go by, they find they kind of lose steam and the to, to continue to proceed to trade. Everything that you want to do in life that's fabulous, big goal, something where you can make a couple thousand dollars, a couple hundred dollars, sitting, uh, sitting home for an hour a day, you know, whatever, whatever that is. Anything that's a fabulous, fabulous goal that you have as a dream, it's going to take work. It's going to take work. It's going to take obstacles. Does it mean it's going to be so much work for the rest of your life? No. What? I know how to trade now, okay? It doesn't mean that every day is easy. But a lot of, I mean, I'm pretty much in a group. I'm in a, you know, I'm in, I just do my thing. Occasionally I have a hard day. But then also the reward is some days I have fabulous days like the Nike trade. 
okay? So, you know, but the bottom line is that every day, for the most part, is easy for me because I've been doing this for so long and I'm in a habit. I'm in a, it's a just like when you get up in the morning and you brush your teeth kind of thing. So at the beginning, when you're learning, and there's a learning curve for everyone, when people come to me, the learning curve could be a day, could be a week, could be a month. I have no idea. I don't know you. But at the beginning, there's a cost involved to set up a training account, to pay for a class, to go through the learning curve, but if, that doesn't last forever. The obstacles that you have to get to the point that you're at right now, to get to the next point, which is success, if you're not successful right now, whatever that takes is whatever it's going to take, and it is different for every single person, okay? My, my journey is different than yours, and everybody here has a story. In fact, if I ever wrote a book, someone said, you write a book, Melissa? I said, no. If I ever wrote a book, it would be more of a motivational book and it might be like my story and like lots of people's stories that I've encountered over the years of their stories about trading because everyone has a story to get to that point. The difference is that not everybody actually achieves success. And so what is the difference between someone that's achieved success and someone that hasn't achieved success? It's very simple. If you quit, you definitely will not make it and therefore you can't quit. So if you get to the point where you're not actually even trying to learn something new and you're trading and you know that it's not working what you're doing, but you don't want to spend any money on a class and you don't want to change what you're doing, you're not going to get anywhere. You're, you're just stuck, stuck in a rut, okay? You must continue to overcome the obstacles to get ahead to the next point. And the sooner you do, the sooner you're going to get there, you know? And of course, there's all these things involved with trading, the mentality of it, the risk amount of it. I say, listen, risk less money if you're in that much fear about the money situation. Risk $100. $100 a trade isn't going to break anyone, okay? Get to the point where you learn it so you can get out of the fear bubble because you're never going to get ahead and be able to make thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars until you understand what to do and you have it down. And then also there's a trust factor. You have to trust someone like me. If you're coming and you're learning from me, you have to trust me that A, I know what I'm doing, and B, I'm gonna be here to help you. I had a man email me the other day. He said, I need some kind of reassurance. I said, what reassurance do you want from me? The reassurance that I can give you is that if you need help, that I will help you. That is the reassurance I can give you. Because I'm not there pressing the buttons for you, taking the trades. You know, you're the one that's in your home at your office when you're doing it. You must be responsible for the decisions that you make and the trades that you take. But in order to become successful, you have to be serious. And that means learning from someone and taking direction. This type of market and really any type of market, I don't think you should trade alone. I think having a mentor and someone to go to to ask questions, to rely on, that will be there from you is something that definitely sets myself apart because you can pick up the phone and call me and I will answer the call or I will call you back. That is unusual, and I have that for people. They've even taken my class five years ago. It's not. I'm, I will remember who you are. Okay. Any questions? I'm watching the time here, Jeff, but I know I started late. We do have we do have more questions. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Does this process work better with certain types of stocks, like growth versus value, from William? Certain types of stocks. It, it depends if it gaps and the gap rate's good. So no, not necessarily. If you're asking me if you'd rather do this sector or that sector, again, if the stock gaps and rates 20, per the 26 point rating system, if it rates good, I'll do it as long as it has volume and can be traded on, on the open market, even if it's spready. So it's not like I'm only doing uh, the tech stocks or I'm only doing the financials or I'm only doing you know gold or something like that. I'm just telling you that I'm not trading penny stocks. I'm typically not doing something at a dollar or two dollars. Will I trade something at five dollars a share? Maybe again if it has volume. But other than that, there's no oh. other you know set prerequisites. Gotcha. Mike wants to know, uh, under what conditions do you add, like you did in the first trade example? If it, if it, if it is, if it, if, for example, I might have the market with me, so I know that it's going to go because I have the market's help to get it down if the market's falling, for example. Could be something like it sets up again. Um, could be the time of the day. So there's lots of factors that are involved with doing an ad like that. It's basically just look at it like you're taking two trades. So instead of taking one trade, you're taking two trades because you're doubling up the risk. So it's basically like you're just taking two trades. And you can take two trades a day. You should give yourself at least two trades a day. Even though sometimes I'm only doing one. I mean, I will allow myself two trades a day, maybe three. Cool. 
William would like to know if you can quantify the extent of the follow through price move. Let's say that again. Can you quantify the extent of the follow through follow through price move? Is what it says. So uh, when you get into a trade, I think he's saying <laughs> you know how far it's going to go. Do you have an idea of how far it's going to go? Can you quantify? As it? far as target, the, if I have a gap, if I have a sliding scale, so it's twenty points or more is a cutoff for me. At seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, it's a fifty fifty chance of working or failing. So if I rate a gap. I mean, I'm not, I don't get a perfect score every time for my system. If I rate a gap and it gets 25 points, that's a great gap. That gap's going to go. It's going to work. I'm going to do it as a day trade. I'm going to do it as an option. You can hold it down. So the, the higher the rating, the better the gap, the bigger the move, the bigger the target. Uh, Mario wants to know, um, if you uh, do you have a, how do you know how much to risk? Do you risk the same amount every time in terms of percent, or do you risk more if you like the signal more? Or is there, do you, uh, is there kind of rules behind how much you're going to risk? Your risk should be different for every person because it's based on your cash. Your risk should have to be based on your cash. You can't have ten thousand dollars in a trading account and risk five thousand dollars on an option. I don't care how good it rates. You have to look at how much money you have in cash at your broker to be able to determine your risk. So. For me, I risk an average of $2,800, $3,000 per trade in my day trades. So I'm risking more for my options, but we're not talking about advanced risk and options right now. But that is based on the cash in your account. If you're someone and you want to ask me, Melissa, I have this much money, and what do you think I should be risking? I will, I will tell you what I think. But again, I'm going to err on the side of conservative and caution if you're new and you had never traded my system before and you just did the class. If somebody has $30,000 in, in a margin account and they want to do day trades, I think they're fine risking $1,000, $1,500 at the most. I wouldn't risk $3,000, which is 10% of your cash balance in, in a day trade if you have 30 grand. Because if you take two trades and you're underwater, then you're going to have to refund the account to get back over, over $25,000 to keep your margin account intact. Make sense? Mm-hmm. It does. Although you could risk half every time. It just wouldn't be recommended. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, just because you can Jesse, doesn't I've mean you should. All. I've seen it all. <laughs> and you know what's so funny? Uh, I have found people that have less, people that have smaller accounts, I shouldn't say less, but people that have smaller accounts, and I don't know why this is, because they swing for the pet fences. They risk the farm, so to speak. People that have smaller accounts tend to be more aggressive and take more risk than people that have larger accounts. I don't know why that is, but I, I don't know if people just want to go hog wild, but it should be the opposite. People that have smaller accounts should be more careful with their risk than somebody with a larger account because they don't have a big margin for error. Um, I, uh, a couple of people asking if we have gap scans in Metastock and it's an easy scan to put together. So yeah, absolutely. Um, and then the last question that I see right here is, uh, what makes you like this strategy above other strategies? Well, I also, don't, uh, yeah, another I from developed Mario. it myself. So I don't, there's no other strategy that I do, another strategy that I made up. So I developed this specific strategy. This is the only one I know. And so it's the only one that I do. And luckily it works. But it took me three years to figure it out. When I started training, I took one class. I didn't learn a million different strategies in that class. I learned different ways to enter trades and I learned about technical analysis, but it wasn't the strategy. And soon after that, I traded a gap. It was a short and I said, oh my God, I can make a lot of money shorting. And it was really, really fast. And I had, a, I had a thousand shares of something and I think I made like $1,500 and I made it like in five minutes. I said, wow, there's something to these gaps and there's something to shorting. And that set me on the right course to actually go ahead and train. But to me, I've never done anything else that's ever worked. So this is why I do it. And it took me three years to figure this out. So it wasn't like, oh, I just woke up one day and figured this out. It was a journey and a process to even figure out the 26 points. But one of the reasons that I don't buy dips is I am not a long-term investor, okay? This is active trading. If you come to me, you're gonna learn how to make money, you're in and out. Like I said, chunking it out. This is not, buying a dip is great, well and good. If you're looking, if you're saying, if, if someone said to me, Melissa, do you think the market's gonna make a new high? I say, yeah, someday. I can't tell you exactly when. So why would I buy a call in the SPY or the Qs for, you know, some date in September, October, or November, or even January 2024. If I don't know the market's higher in the next six months, it could be lower in the next six months. We may not make new highs in the market until 2025. 
So long-term investing is not what I do, and it's very different. I would use a different strategy probably or have a different look on things for long-term investing. But that being said, maybe I wouldn't. Maybe I wouldn't. I'm in all cash in my actually my retirement. I'm young, but I did not buy the market at the beginning of this year or the end of last year. And then I, then I wondered if I missed the drop, and I said to myself, no, because there's a high pro probability or 50-50 probability that the market could drop again, and I would be upset with myself as someone that professionally trades this, even to see my retirement as young as I am, go down 25-30%. I would be angry with myself to sit and watch that. And that is exactly what's going to happen when people that went long the market, even though you're up right now, and even though we're up in the market of the year, we could still fall and crash. One of the things, and I wrote talking points because I was, I, I, I'm on Newsmax this coming week. Two things that could screw up the market from making new highs. Number one, any conflict that could happen with a war. That includes China, Taiwan, Russia, Ukraine, the U.S. could get involved with. And number two, the Fed with interest rates. They're saying they're going to raise interest rates a half a point between now and the end of the year. I wouldn't bet my life on it. I wouldn't bet my life on it because the fact is they may raise them more. They may raise them more. So two things that could affect the market and mean we don't continue higher. And you have to be aware of that. Is that everything for now? Question. Oh, one more question um, came in while you're talking. Uh, how do you know how much the gap will be before the opening price? I, I don't. I see it in the pre-market. I don't know. I, I see it just like you do. But that's why you have to have, like, again, you could talk to Jeff about this. Jeff can do a little, little uh, demo to show you pre-market candlesticks. I don't, I'm not predicting the gap is going to happen. I'm seeing it, seeing it on the chart. And then I rate it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And yeah, if you have real time, you can absolutely plot pre-market data easily. And then the last, last question, <laughs> what is real estate versus trading in terms, what are the advantages of, uh, of real estate versus trading in terms of making money? Which would you prefer? Well, I prefer working for myself. When I was in real estate, I wasn't working for myself. I was at the mercy of banks that would approve loans or not approve loans. And I would never want to go back to that career. Look at the interest rate environment we're in right now. People want to buy houses and rates have gone up. Things cost more. Banks are getting stricter because they're going under and they're having all kinds of other uh, problems with defaults. But the reality is I work for myself, whether it's a stock switch business or if I decide to not do the business of the future and trade by myself, the only person I'm responsible for is myself. I would never want to go back to reporting to a boss. I would never want to go back in the office again. And I would not want my income to be dependent on someone else's decision. And the problem is, and one of the reasons I got frustrated with the mortgages in 2007, 2008, I had plenty of customers that wanted to come to me, wanted to buy houses. They were interested. It was difficult to get banks to approve loans. Banks were not wanting to approve loans when they were starting to go under, when mortgage companies were going under. So, you know, you're having a similar situation now where banks are becoming, uh, it's harder to get loans approved and interest rates are higher and people qualify for less. So it's a difficult industry. I do not want to go back to that industry and luckily I will never have to. Working for yourself if you're a type A personality like I am, is a best case scenario. You have to be able to be at home and be responsible and be diligent and close the door in your office and just, you know, sit and train for a half an hour, an hour a day. With mortgages, I was working seven days a week, and I just never want to go back to that. So let's let's get into it here now. If we have any other questions, you can let me know. Let me try to get through this because I'm watching the time and seeing it's a little after five. This was CCL. We did a nice short in the CCL. Just showing you here. Stock close here. Gap down fell. Okay, this was on the 26th. This was another day trade. Again, we did an ad. This was a lot cheaper though than Baidu. 1445, shares were 5,000, risk was 3250. Ad was 1480, total shares was 10,000. That's a lot I know, but again, this was a lot cheaper of a stock. Average price was 14.62. Exit was 13.95. I felt confident this would go to 14. We also did a put, a put in CCL. You could have bought the put, or you could have done the short again. You would have needed a margin account for this. Profit was 6,700 dollars. And again, looking at this, just a you know the whole concept of being able to take a, something like this in a one minute and to be able to make over six grand and be in and out so quickly is one of the reasons that I love to trade. So, anyways, here's the move again. Boom. That's it. This is a one minute chart. This is a one minute chart. You short it, get the drop. Short it, get the drop. Mm, out. 
Nice move. And again, it was a gap. So anyways, just trying to get through the rest of this here while I'm answering some of your questions. You have to make good choices. You've got to find quality trades. The whole point of doing this is to make money. You do need good money management. We talked a little bit about that as far as having small accounts and big accounts and how much you risk. I use stops in my day trades. I do not use stops in my options because my stop is essentially my risk. So if I risk $7,000 in an option, I can't lose more than $7,000. The whole thing could go against me completely like CVS, and I'm not gonna lose more than that. So I do use stops though for my day trades because it's a limit order stop, it's gonna hit me out. So I could get stopped. I wanna get stopped if it's not gonna work and it's gonna go against me. Because again, we're taking trades of the one minute chart and things move fast in the one minute. And it's okay to take a stop. It's like the insurance, it's protecting you from having unlimited losses. You set your risk, whether it's 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, you set your risk and this putting the stop in is setting it, you know, not saying, well, I'll kill it. No, put the stop in. But anyways, getting back to training for a living, bottom line is you got to win more than you lose. It's the only way to consistently make profits. And then sometimes you will have a big winner. You will have a big winner sometimes, but you have to win more than you lose. We do have losers, okay? So the big winners cover the losers, and then the consistent winners mean you move ahead. And that's how you chunk it out. And you have to look at every day, every day. I get up on Monday, I have no idea what I'm gonna do Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday or Friday. I get up in the morning and I scan and look for gaps. And again, that's something that you can talk to Jeff about after I'm done talking here and he will help you find ways to scan gaps. But it's the disciplined behavior on trying to focus on what to do. It's about quality, not quantity when you're trading. And so for me, I was always very focused on making money. I was when I was doing mortgages too. I wanted to make as much money as I could, and for me, it's based on my risk. So I'm in a groove right now, and obviously I'm running the room, and I'm trading at the same time, so that's a lot. I'm able to handle it and do it. I have not upped my risk in a while. I might. The time to do it will be earnings season if I'm going to. I think once you get in a groove with trading and you're happy with your risk and what you're making, you can move forward and baby step it up it. So you could start out with the $500, then you could up it to $750, then you could up it to $1,000. Again, I'd rather see people learn the system and understand it than just go hog wild with their risk, even if they have the cash right away. But it is about consistent consistency, okay, in the train selection, in the focus on what you're doing, and having the right strategy. So for me, it's about looking at the daily chart. I rate the gap in the morning with a checklist. This is what I teach in the class. I'm looking for the price of the stock to read the correct direction daily. That's telling me where the money is flowing, again, up or down. And it matters. It matters because if somebody is dumping a stock and you want to go long it to buy the dip, you're not going to make any money. You're going to lose. And you can keep going long and keep going long and keep going long it, but you're going to keep losing, losing, losing. So again, you have to be with institutional money to make money in any stock or the market. And you can short against even a bullish market. So what do you need to make trading work? You need a consistent strategy, which we've been talking about all day. You need to stick with one thing until you get good at it. And for me, it's even one direction. So I really stuck with nothing but shorts till I got really good at shorting. And now I do longs too. But I mean, my focus for me really is shorting, buying puts and shorting. Here are results for the year so far, 2023. This is no, not the options. This is in the day trade room. Again, I was off for this past week. This is with an average risk of $2,800 per trade. All these trades are on margin. There's very few longs in here. Most of these trades are short since the beginning of the year. And again, looking at the stats for this year to be up th over 332,000 with as bullish as the market was this year, knowing that most of these trades were shorts, you can tell I'm an expert in shorting. What will happen if we fall in the second part of the year? Will I then want to do the opposite and go long? No, I'm still going to focus on shorting because I really find, again, as teaching people as long as I've been doing this and as aggressive as I am with getting in shorts very quickly in the morning, in the first couple minutes of the day, most traders don't know how to short. Most traders don't want to short. Most traders have no idea how to short or if they short, they don't know what they're doing. So you really will have a niche if you decide to focus on shorting, whether you come to me or go with somebody else. For some reason, the idea of buying low and selling high and going long is something that more day traders, more retail traders prefer to do. But I'm telling you, if you can make a lot of money shorting, the moves go fast. And if you learn how to do it right, you can get in that niche. And then that sets you apart from you know a lot of other people. And then you can get in the trades fast, like I said, and get out very, very quickly. So you, it's something you can do on the side. It's something that you can do full time. 
If you want to come and you want to learn from me, I would be your mentor in the class and in the live trading room. And then obviously you would learn my gap system. I think it's important. We're halfway through the year. I can't even believe it. It's hard to believe. We're here. It is July. The year is half over for 2023. But it, you need to make a plan of action if you want to be in a different place financially by January 1st. Okay. So set goals for yourself. Set reasonable goals for yourself. In the next six months, you want to be at this place. Okay. Because if you don't set goals for yourself now and you just keep letting time go by and you just keep sticking in a rut, you're never going to get anywhere. And all of a sudden, it's going to be the holidays and you're not where you want to be by the end of the year. So if you want to come and learn from me, number one, you would trade only gaps. You would learn the system. You would take the entries in the room or you would do the options and the day trades too, whichever one you want to do for yourself. And you create a money management plan for yourself to achieve your goals. I say one to one. So most trades are going to be looking for if you risk a thousand, you're looking to make a thousand. I think that's a solid expectation to have when you're taking the trades. What will you learn in the class from me? You will learn a rating system to find gaps in the daily chart that have a high probability of directional bias for the entire trading day, a big move of the day, early confirmation of the bias and the move between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern time, and precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward target potential. And again, that's what I'm calling out in the room when I'm calling the trades and I'm telling you where the entry is and I'm also saying the targets. And on the options newsletter, I have the targets. Again, they go to your email. There's no prerequisites for that. I have the targets in the letter. So the class is called the Golden Gap Course. If you want to sign up, the class is the end of July, July 22nd, 2nd, and 23rd. It is a 26-point professional bearish gap rating system. The purpose of the system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. This checklist tells you what to trade when and in what direction. The 26-point checklist predicts directional bias in a stock. And so you'll learn the entries, you'll learn the exits, you'll learn how to read institutional positioning in the stocks, you'll learn how to day trade gaps if this is something you want to do. And I make the ratings for the options, and then I'm entering the options as if it's a day trade, but I'm just holding the options longer. So the class is July 22nd and 23rd, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern time. Class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. Again, I live in New York, so I'm not doing live classes yet in New York. I might. That's something I thought about for the future. But for now, I'm doing online classes. The class tuition is $69.99. If you want to sign up, you can email me. And as I was saying earlier, I've been running a July 4th special, just happened to have the webinar today. This is over tomorrow though. If you wanna sign up, um, you can sign up and get the trading room free for one year and the Gap Options newsletter free for one year with the class. The deadline for that though is tomorrow. Um, any questions here? Um, yes, uh, real quickly. Um, how, my question to know, how long does it take to go through the 26 point process? Well, obviously, I've been doing this a long time, so I can do it, you know, in, in a minute, but I don't rush it. I mean, I'll sit down with a cup of coffee in the morning and I'll take my time rating the gap. I'll take, you know, 10 minutes looking at something. If you're new, it's probably going to take you about eight to 10 minutes looking at each stock. Um, is volatility important with your strategy from David? Well, the volatility is the momentum. So yeah, you got to get volatility because that's the momentum. That's what you're playing on. And again, volatility can be up or down. But the whole point, you make money trading volatility if you can spot it. That is, that is again, the whole way you want to make money as an individual trader. Otherwise, you're trading for pennies. I'm not trading for pennies. I'm trading for dollars. So volatility is good. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, Mario wants to know, do I get a replay of the 2 get day class? No, the class is live. You must be there in person. But you can okay. call me and email me if you have questions. Uh, Mario wants to know if it includes a uh, platform <laughs> like Metastock. It doesn't include Metastock. No, <laughs> you would have to go to Jeff if you want charts. And Jeff is not a broker, so you would have to fund an account at a broker. If you want a referral, you can email me, but you can get charts from Jeff, and he can help you with scanning and finding the gaps. And then you have to go to a broker to fund your account. All right. That's the end of the questions. Thank, Thank you, you, Melissa. So, much. so again, if you want to, if you want to find out about that, what a great opportunity! Good freedom special, if you would, Melissa at the stocksquish dot com. Thanks for having me. Have a good night. All right. Thank you, Melissa. Thanks for coming. Thank you.